Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Nanaliza Don and Rainier host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match coming in here. It's going to be Ultra Godzilla versus Kingstad on into battle. Ultra Godzilla starting out with the Light Vehicle Factory, while Kingstad also goes for Light Vehicles because we are playing an into battle, so why not just play Light Vehicles all day, every day? Because that is how we into battle. I, I didn't expect to actually get a phrase that sounded like the sort of stereotypical way that 0k players sometimes speak, but there we go. This is how we into battle. Not sure that was the idea, entire idea behind the map name, but there you go. Anyway, Ultra Godzilla is being a little bit more aggressive coming in here, trying to find some way of getting damage in Kingstead, but early raiding as it typically goes becomes a bit of a crapshoot. However, Ultra Godzilla does manage to win out that first little raid, and that one Scorcher being a little bit of a hero Scorcher coming in. Doing a lot of work. Same time, though, Ultra Godzilla does have an expansion attempt that should be happening any time now. Well, they are managing to get some harassment going in on Kingstead at the same time, but yeah, this is kind of kind of finicky. Ooh. Ah, I got stuck in the terraforming. That that is a shame. I haven't really seen a commander really get stuck in terraforming like that, but I guess it happens. Because the problem here is that they'd have to actually reclaim this Lotus in order to get rid of the terraform, because you can't de-terraform. Oh, actually, no. I think they could terraform... Let's see, where are, they, where are they are right now? Yeah, they could probably terraform the exact location they're at right there, and it's not quite underneath the Lotus, so it would be able to do that without moving the Lotus. Because the thing is, terraforming can't actually work on buildings. If a building has been constructed, you can't terraform under it, and or can't change the terraforming under it. So there's no way of terraforming down the Lotus... But the terraform itself doesn't have to be on this kind of hill. That's just how it tends to work out, but you could theoretically, I think, terraform down the sides. That's a bit of a weird situation. I don't know if Ultra Godzilla requested this because they wanted to get advice on how to actually fix this particular problem, or if they wanted to just show off how well they were able to beat the game despite the fact that this happened. Oh, sorry, this is Kingstead's problem. But yeah. So I guess Ultra Godzilla is not worried about this because this is all Kingstead's problem, not Ultra Godzilla's. Yeah, well, at any rate, they got that sorted out in the game from the chat from the looks of it. While well, at the same time, Kingsteady was able to build up, but of course the problem is they haven't been able to expand with their commander, so this entire thing is going to be a little bit of a problem, but yeah, there we go. Kingstead at least able to build some energy as needed. Where Ultra Godzilla is starting to run a little low on energy, they do have power plants coming in here and there. So it's not the biggest deal, but it is still there, and it's still a bit of a problem. But anyway, Kingstead expanding over to the southeast... Shouldn't be a big deal. He <laughs> said, getting the stinger up just to make sure they have something. At the very, very least, they have a stinger up, if nothing else. I like that. That is... That is resourceful to some extent. At the very least, Kingstead does have a very large army. They don't really have anything to worry about when it comes to raids from Ultra Godzilla, except for the fact that these forces are a little bit out of position. I'm not sure I entirely agree with the way that Kingstead has positioned things here. I think Kingstead could probably put this back in their base. Nope, they're going for the Rippers. Okay, they have the Rippers in their base. That'll make sense. At the same time, though, a lot of Scorchers and Darts coming in from Ultra Godzilla. Ripper Fencer being the only defenses for Kingstead. And it looks like Ultra Godzilla is primarily concerned with knowing whether or not these Metal Extractor points are taken, which they are not. Good thing Kingstead went over to the southeast, which is probably exactly why they went to the southeast. However, Ultra Godzilla is moving in ominously towards the main base. Looks like they're checking around to see if there's any wind generators over to the northwest first. Or anything. But at the same time, Kingstead coming in over to the north. So both sides very quickly setting up for a fight. Very quickly setting up for parallel harassment. Coming in here, Ultra Godzilla taking on a melee striker, taking on a mason. Being forced back as a result of that. But still, that is value right there. While at the same time, Ultra Godzilla losing a lot in the top side. Kingstead takes out darts, scorchers, a couple melee strikers. And while the reinforcements come in from Ultra Godzilla, they are not able to really fend off Kingstead's forces. Kingstead with the Retreat Micro just to try to hold things off. While at the same time, Ultra Godzilla is pulling back from Kingstead's base after taking out, you know, Metal Extractor Mason. Not a bad shot there, but Kingstead getting a lot of revenge. The commander getting under attack, but being defended very effectively by the rest of those Scorchers. And that forces Kingstead back into a bit more of a neutral position. At this point, Kingstad just setting up their Ripper Fencer build because that is what they're going for. They want to make sure they have stuff to actually counter the Scorcher Dart 
At the same time, Ultra Godzilla still focusing on Scorcher Dart, with a bit of a transition being planned to Fencer Ravager. But that Fencer Ravager transition has yet to happen. So I like the way King's Dad is building. They do have a great counter force coming in here for whatever Ultra Godzilla decides to push in. Speaking of Ultra Godzilla pushing in along the western side of the map, which will be countered reasonably effectively by the Fencers. I don't like the positioning here, but it does work fine. Gets rid of one of the darts, and that puts Ultra Godzilla on the back foot. So for now, Ultra Godzilla is definitely going to be running into some problems as far as actually attacking Kingstad. Because Kingstad's prepared, Kingstad's stuff built up, Ultra Godzilla coming with the Mason over to the southeast. Dude, that is going to be embarrassing. That Mason's going to come in here. It's going to get spotted by the Stardust. It's going to get torn to pieces by the Stardust. Ultra Godzilla will know the expansion's there, but they're not going to be able to do much about it. And at the same time, Kingstad sees Harassment Force coming in here, just pushes back. Doesn't want to lose another Mason to this, which I don't blame them. You generally don't want to lose Masons if you can help it. However, Ultra Godzilla looking to flank. And that's going to be a bit tricky. I mean, if Kingstad's able to get rid of the forces that are at least flanking around the map, it shouldn't be a problem. The Lotus is being built up. Is it going to be in time? That's three seconds, two seconds. It doesn't even matter. Does not matter. The forces coming in here over to the southeast. Worth noting, the bottom two metal extractors were completely undefended. However, this Scorcher is going to be heavily damaged. Not killed, just heavily damaged. But not in time for the Stinger to do much. These darts, the Dart Scorcher should be able to take care of two of these metal extractors before anything becomes a problem because of the position of that Stardust. Which is a bit of a shame. But so it goes. The Dart coming in here. Actually getting line of sight blocked. That Stardust not even able to do anything just because of the line of sight blocking of the metal extractor. And there comes the Scorcher to finish things off. So this southeast side is being torn apart. But at the same time, the northwest, Ultra Godzilla losing their stake out in the northwest side of the map. But at the same time, Kingstad still maintains the Mason on the southeast side of the map. So overall, the corner expansion's victory for Kingstad does mean that Kingstad's going to have that much stronger an economy going forward. Of course, the problem for them is a lack of power. Needing to build up more power is always a thing you have to worry about in this game. And that's something Kingstad seems to be ignoring, primarily because they are reclaiming some of the stuff from the first battle in their base. But of course, that's not enough. Power needs to be built. And there it is. Solar Collector is being built up over inside of the base, so Kingstad is at least on the ball in that respect. At the same time, though, a wall attempt being built up by Ultra Godzilla not being allowed. I don't think Kingstad cares, though. It looks like they really want to come in over to the center and take out the Metal Extractors up the front. Because they really can. Like, there's no reason not to. Yes, they can attack the back side, but if they attack over to the front, they open up the gates to make sure that the rest of their reinforcements can come in without having to go around the back. Same time, though, Dominatrix has been built up, taking out the first Ravager. But Fall Defense or Scorch's Dart's coming in here. Dart, however, is distracting one of the Dominatrices. And the Ravager coming in should be able to at least deal some damage, but is getting torn apart by the Scorchers. Still, Ultra Godzilla losing a lot of their forces for very little cost on Kingstad's part. Kingstad, however, is losing Lotus after Lotus. And at this point, the Revenge coming in here. The forces primarily were a little out of position. And unfortunately for Kingstad, they have to punch through Ultra Godzilla's defenses in order to get there. Ultra Godzilla in a much better position as far as actually assaulting the forces here. Kingstead, not so much, and starting to excess metal as well, just for the lack of energy. And also a lack of build power coming into the main base. All they really have at this point is Dominatrices, using them to try to eat away at all of Ultra Godzilla's forces, but it's not going to be enough. Dominatrices goes down, that is a dart and a fencer being passed back to, King to Ultra Godzilla. Kingstead, not really able to do much other than just remove forces very slowly. And not very efficiently. But there comes the cavalry coming in this north side of the map. Coming in, in the back bottom as Ultra Godzilla is building up Metal Extractors inside of Kingstad's base. But finally, Ultra Godzilla goes in for the attack. And that Stinger that built up early in the game gets a little bit of value. But unfortunately, it's not even going to be enough. Ripper's coming in to try to save the base, but it's not going to help out. Same time, the forces over the top are being torn to pieces. Ultra Godzilla losing very little to get rid of Kingstad's entire army. Kingstad... This is rather unfortunate. I don't expect this entirely because of their commander, but it was still a major issue, and it still made it very difficult for them to expand, allowing Ultra Godzilla to take most of the map. Kings didn't even take these front metal extractors at all. They took the southeast, they took their main base, but they didn't take anything in the front. Their commander wasn't really available to do that, and is still stuck in the walls! Okay, never mind. The commander being stuck in there was still the problem. I'm not quite sure why this Lotus was never reclaimed. Should point out the Lotus has just now finally done something! So just now finally hit something, and that something is a Ravager which is destroying the rest of the base. This factory is almost going to go down. There is not a whole lot left to deal with from King's Dead that they can actually use to push against Ultra Godzilla's forces as Ultra Godzilla tries everything they can. I mean, they at least 
I like the fact that Kingstad is able to capture a few things here and there with the Dominatrices. But it's not enough. Unless they go for the Recon Capture. If they go for the Commander Capture, that would actually be really cool. But no one ever goes for Commander Capture. I have done it once. I'm the only person I know of who has actually gone for Commander Capture. But it's like, come on. You get three Dominatrices on a Commander. You take the Commander. You just take the Commander. And at this point, that's a huge part of the forces coming in here dealing the damage. Ultra Godzilla, however, is just streaming in forces consistently. Kingstead barely able to build up anything. Their factory is not quite dead yet. But it may not even matter. I mean, at the same time... This factory is at least being able to build up some things here and there, but if it gets attacked, if it ever gets attacked, it simply cannot last. Can't really do anything because it's being attacked. The units being built are being destroyed in the process. So there is not a whole lot that can be said other than that hopefully the the, king, the caretakers come in and take this apart and actually make it work, but that's all Kingstad has is these caretakers. Still the Stingers coming in here with a load of support, actually able to do something... But it's not enough. The Dominus just comes out here, takes one of the Ravagers. Actually, not a bad idea. Taking one of the Ravagers, that should at least distract some of the forces here from the defenses from Ultra Godzilla. But really, Kingstad essentially has to be using that Ravager as a way of building up their army. And that is not going to help too much. Just continuing to build up defenses, desperately trying to get something to hold back what Ultra Godzilla is passing in. But it's still a massive, massive burden to actually set this thing up. Defenses are still coming in here. Ultra Godzilla. Slowly but surely, building up their forces. If they're able to get rid of this caretaker, then it's going to all fall apart. I mean, the caretakers are certainly trying to repair, but five fencers, that is a lot of damage. That is a lot coming in here. It's not necessarily enough to get through the caretaker heal, though. And that's actually a really big deal right now. I kind of wish Ultra Godzilla would go to Impalers. I mean, I'm a bit of a hypocrite for saying it, but Impalers would work really well right about now. That's kind of what you need when you're dealing with this kind of defenses. But at this point, Ultra Godzilla just wants to make sure that they have enough defenses set up so that this contain is secure. Now, that being said, Kingstead is expanding over to the northwest. I mean, I said before, the corner expansions were already Kingstead's victory. Well, no one's contesting the northwest expansion. Ultra Godzilla isn't even looking at it. So right now, all that's happening is just getting an Aegis up. Actually, I kind of like that. Get the Aegis up, get the Rover Assembly protected. That allows for units to potentially be built up. And then from there, you just use that to get enough, sh like get a shielding, get the units built up again. The defensor harassment doesn't actually cause problems. And from there, Kingstack can possibly build up the Northwest Metal Extractors, and that would allow them to get back some amount of production. However, that is a tall order, and I kind of wish Kingstad would actually build up another factory. Like build up an air factory or something, or just any other factory, really. And then use that to get rid of these forces. Hell, a jump on factory actually wouldn't be a bad idea to get the Firewalker up to burn everything out here. Like, if that happened, I could see it totally working out. But we aren't seeing that. Instead, we are seeing the shields coming in here, which I don't... I, I kind of see the point of. Not sure I totally agree with, but I like... I like the idea here, because two Aguses is actually enough to stop the fencer. A single fencer. That means this rover assembly can start building things and not have things... Get, not have anything get in the way. I just wish Kingstown would actually do that, because at the moment, they are reclaiming into excess. Which, okay, I don't totally blame them for. We do have Reclaim coming in here from Ultra Godzilla as well, so King's Dad might want to just take that as a way of denying the Reclaim, even if they can't necessarily use it themselves. That being said, the shields will only last so long as multiple fencers are coming in here, and the Stingers are in place, so it does make it difficult for the fencers to actually stay alive long enough to deal significant damage to the shields, but they are staying alive long enough to get through them and make the Rover Assembly again unable to build if it even was trying to. I'm seriously curious, are we seeing another production facility? No, we're not. We aren't seeing anything else coming out from Kingstead. I kind of expect something proxy or just anything. Just build anything. Kingstead has a fair amount of resources actually available. They could build another factory if they so chose. I like the use of the power, though. It does get them some overdrive. And also make sure that, you know, it can support the shields. That, that's a huge part of it. Actually, that's, that's the main part of it, is making sure the shields have their support. Like, shields on top of repair... That all requires a lot of energy. However, energy or not, Ultra Godzilla finally coming in here with a bit of an air force. Gunships coming in, Tridents and Nimbuses should be able to tear apart everything that's built up. The Nimbuses are going to, however, have a similar problem to the fencers. They have to get through the shields. And the shields are going to block them. It's a lot of low alpha attacks. And that's always the problem. Ow, I missed, how did I miss this? I completely missed this. I was trying to think, okay, where's King's Dad's proxy? King's got to have a proxy. Yeah, the southeast. 
That's what the proxy is. Getting a bunch of sides because it is King's dead. Of course that is going to work. And that is going to be at least something. But I don't know how much use is going to be. The Phantom coming in here to at least help defend. But at this point, I'm sure Ultra Godzilla realizes that there's a proxy somewhere. And knows the corner has been built up. That's kind of what I was expecting the northwest corner to be used. Because the northwest corner is not one that Ultra Godzilla was aware King's dead had control over. But at this point... Ultra Godzilla can just go wherever they want. I mean, they're sending in the Nemesis. There's no razor or anything to stop it. So, there was nothing actually going to get in the way. This Koki factory is pretty well doomed. I mean, its days are numbered. At the same time, that does open things up for the rover assembly to start building up itself. I mean, there is enough razor, enough metal. Like, come on. King's dead. Stop excessing. I know it's, and again, hypocritical for me to say, but you're excessing. You are doing the excess thing. Oh, nice. Use, good use of Phantom on sniping the air. I like that. That was actually really cool. So now King's Head does have a great position to work from. Which is perfect timing, too, as Ultra Godzilla going in for the missile silo. Unfortunately, the commander is right there. It's not upgraded, but it is still right there. So, enough sides could take an ass. At the very least, it's been spotted. So it's not going to last too long without at least some resistance. But at the same time, Stardust coming in here should be a bit of an issue. But then Ultra Godzilla is losing a lot of forces to these sides, and King's Head might be able to turn this around. Getting rid of one, one caretaker, two caretakers down, third caretaker almost down. That does slow things down a bunch for the missile silo. That buys King's Dead a couple minutes, which may be all they need. They have the Phantom, they have the Gremlins just in case for an anti-gunship. A few more sides coming in here could take out the missile silo. The Stardust being the one major concern. Sides only deal 200 damage a shot, so that, si that Stardust will kill them. However, that being said, the Igus is also fully charged. This vehicle factory, the rover assembly could just build whatever the heck it wants, whenever the heck it wants. I mean, we are seeing the Cloakie factory being the primary focus, but with enough reclaim, it could be both. And here's Ultra Godzilla coming in, away from the Stardust range. Very smart play by them. Making sure to take out everything they can that's up here. Dart slowing down the sides, which isn't actually proving that big of a problem. As more and more fences do go down, the sides should be able to take out basically everything King's Dad is sending in with enough size. But there's the Phantom. That's the real meat. Should one-shot that Stardust, and then that should be it. Go for the Stardust. Go for the Stardust. Or the Missile Silo, either way, but start... Hit something! Okay, it's not hitting anything. I should have been going for the Commander, honestly. But whatever it goes for it should actually, you know, start shooting. Why is it not shooting? Like, this has attack range. Attack range of the wazoo. It shouldn't even need to be this close. I'm, I think there's a bug going on here. Okay, yeah, something's going up here with this Phantom, because it's clearly targeting. It's clearly meant to be shooting, but it isn't. Not quite sure why. Oh, okay, okay, okay. King Stat in chat and Twitch chat pointing out that the Phantom is actually bugged in a way that was fixed in the most recent patch. Which I guess is 1740. But yeah, it's that Phantom bug got fixed. But that's a real shame, because that Phantom could have destroyed pretty much this entire base coming in here. Or this entire fire base with the missile silo and everything. But now the missile silo is complete. So, while the sides are able to come in and start damaging Ultra Godzilla's base a little bit, King's Dead will probably lose everything to a bunch of missile silos. Or most of Inferno missiles. And there's the Infernos coming in. The shields are down. The Infernos can get in there and destroy everything. But yeah, I'm kind of curious what happened. What that bug was. We're going to look at the patch notes. Or the commit history, I guess, specifically. To see if there's any details of what exactly happened. Because that was just weird. Like, why would you lose the command? Why would you lose this, the sniper there? Doing nothing. And Ultra Godzilla could just tear, tear apart everything inside of King's Dad's base. King's Dad still does have the, the Klogibot factory over to the eastern side of the map. That is the one asset they have in their favor. Although, at the same time, Dominatrices are still do going to Dominatrix. And Ultra Godzilla is still sieging King's Dad's base quite effectively. There's the Inferno coming in. And again, the shields are down. So the Inferno should be able to destroy everything. There it is. Hitting that, starting to burn up the shields, metal extractors, and all the defenses, along with the caretakers. There is not a whole lot left. Just reclaiming the gunship land, because it's clear this base is lost. King's Dad knows that they're just trying to pull as much of the resources as possible into this cloaky factory. Getting slings now, too. A bit of a surprise, but not entirely. Besides what we're doing, a fine job getting rid of a lot of the base coming in. It's King's Dad. I've mentioned before, this is King's Dad's favorite unit, is the Scythe. But yeah, King's Dead losing their entire main base. The commander should fall soon afterwards. Actually, no! The commander can, the commander's free! 
If it weren't for the EMP at least, but other than that, the commander's actually free. The only problem was the Shockley coming in and tearing them to pe tearing their pieces. They have 35 seconds of paralysis. If it weren't for that, they'd be fine. But unfortunately, that is a thing. Also, unfortunately, the Dominatrix Scythe is also a thing. Tearing apart all these slings coming in here. But hey, these scythes, the rest of the time, though, are doing a great job just tearing apart Ultra Godzilla's economy. The Dominatrix is the only thing that's really being a threat to them. And if those can be avoided or killed, well, those scythes could still do a lot of damage. Could still be a base trade, honestly, after all this. I mean, Ultra Godzilla is tearing apart everything Kingstad has, but Kingstad still has the south, the corners, or no, the southeast, the northwest has been taken from them. But hey, the southeast corner is still available. But unfortunately, the slings are also being taken away from them. So really not a whole lot they have to their favor. But the scythes are coming in, and they should get rid of the nominatrix. There's the nominatrix goes down. That does free up a scythe. That is handy. Getting rid of one of, the, or getting rid of one of the captured scythes or capturing of the scythe. If this Dominatrix go down as, goes down as well, that could turn things around, or at least really help things out. I, I still, okay, turn things around is a strong, strong choice of words. I suppose it's not really a fair thing to say. But hey, these slings are available again, so at this point, Kingstad going in for what is effectively their final push, trying to get in something, anything, as their main base is destroyed and Ultra Godzilla has loads of reclaim to work with. This is the one thing. Ultra Godzilla has a lot of metal to work with here. I mean, they basically have doubled their economy for the next, for the rest of the game. For however long this game takes, they're, it's done. The economy is completely set. And there's not a whole lot that can be done about that. But at the same time, they are, at, they are sieging Ultra Godzilla's base. If only Ultra Godzilla was actually completely contained in that base, that'd be fine. But hey, it's a good turnaround from Kingstead. Very least, does open things up a little bit. But Kingstead's got to be super careful here because they can't afford to lose much of anything. And they are losing a lot in this assault. I mean, that's what the slings are for. Get rid of the defenses first. Why are, the slings should be fight moved, though. Because obviously the point is to get rid of the defenses. They want to get rid of the defenses, possibly get rid of some of the rippers as well. But if they don't get rid of those, the slings won't be able to do much of anything useful. And it should be noted, Kingstead only has 11 mil per second. They are, they are at their last leg. They're on their last legs right now. As, at the same time, Ultra Godzilla is setting up to attack the final base. And Kingstead realizing they're done... Throws in the towel after a very hard fought, if hard played game. I mean, that was a that was a hard game. Kings just never really had a break at all that game. From the very beginning, they didn't have their commander available. As ten build power, essentially lost. I mean, that is a lot of value that was lost trying to get in and ultimately not being able to do much with it. So, I mean, I just I'm surprised Kingstad didn't try to fix that up, but they didn't. Anyway, that is, that is... Yeah, no, it is... This was a request, by the way. Kingstad and Chat wondering if this was a request. Indeed, it was. Ultra Godzilla asked for it specifically. So, that's why we did it. Silly though it was, it was done. It was requested, and it was silly. Yes. I totally agree. It was a silly game. But anyway, we're going to have another match, which is... Ah, hang on. We're going to have another match. It is going to be less requested. It's going to be a match, because why not have a match? We're going to have... Well, I can give you another Ultra Godzilla match, but I'm not really sure I want to do that. And let's see. Oh, hey, Golden Anarchid. Let's do that. Golden Anarchid and Wanderlust. That'll be the next match. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.